Coast Junction. We've got a 10-year-old male, got a head injury, mm. involved in a car accident. There's a responder just getting there, so we'll yeah. give you an update if we can. Um, patient has a head injury. Uh, there is also a crew on route. Uh, ETH showing about six minutes. As a police officer, um, I deal with um, road traffic collisions. You know, we see all kinds of sights, but nothing can, can prepare you for seeing your son um, basically dead on the floor. Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing you can do to prepare for that. He was on his back, uh, lifeless, blood filling his nose and mouth, uh, wasn't breathing, um, legs were by his head somewhere, um, and just nobody doing anything for him. When we arrived at this scene, um, it was um, traumatic because there was a lot of bystanders that were obviously very distressed from what they've seen, including Joshua's father, who was desperate for us to be able to help Joshua. We landed very near to where the accident had happened, and we could see that uh, there was a, a, a car involved and a, and, a, and a cycle, and we'd been told it was a, a child being hit by a car. And, uh, and on our first arrival we could see that the ambulance crews that were already there were working very hard with Josh and that he was in a very poorly condition. As I ran up the road, um, I basically came to the scene here, which is where the accident was. I couldn't see anything as I was walking up the road. It was just literally a car, a lot of people standing around. Um, and it wasn't until I actually got to the people and sort of got between the people that I saw Josh on the floor. We cleared his airway. Um, with some suction, gave him some oxygen, inserted some airway adjuncts into his airway to ensure that he was still being able to get enough oxygen. We loaded Joshua into the helicopter and um, we knew we had to get Joshua to the right hospital as quick as possible. We chose to take Joshua to the Birmingham Children's Hospital, which is a major trauma centre and it's set up especially for children. I was asleep at the side of his bed um, and it was about four o'clock in the morning on the 4th of July um, and I was awoken to Josh just saying dad, dad, dad and I just burst out crying and, and put my head on the side of the bed just in sheer sort of disbelief. We'd been told by the specialists that he was going to be in a coma for a year. So we'd resigned ourselves to the fact that we weren't going to see anything for at least a year. The last thing I expected was to be woken up by my son calling my name three months after his accident. I love you. Throughout his recovery, Josh has just defied all odds. Um, people have said he's not going to be able to do this, he's not going to be able to do that, they'll give us timelines. And he's just exceeded everybody's expectations. And here we are, less than two years later, and he's riding around a BMX track. Josh is an inspiration. Um, there are a lot of things that, um, obviously, John thought that Josh wasn't going to ever do. And now Josh is walking, you know, he doesn't need a wheelchair. Um, so we can basically do anything that any normal kid of Josh's age can do. Josh is, you know, I've seen him here today. You know, it's, it's, it's great because Josh was extremely poorly. He was, you know, he was in a, in a, a very critical way. And both myself and my colleague, if we're honest, we didn't expect Josh to, to survive. He had such critical injuries. You know, he's, he's achieved a lot more than people said he would. He is a miracle. He is. He would still be in a coma uh, or in a wheelchair today if, if it weren't for the guys on, on, on you know, Midlands Air Ambulance doing the job they do. Um, 
they're, they're the unsung heroes because you know for a year we didn't even, even know who they were they hadn't got the names or anything like that but you know they do this day in day out and, and get the results that we've got with Josh and it's just absolutely fantastic. Thank you for saving my life.